Fed believes, whether they're correct or not, that they believe that in order to cure inflation, you must raise interest rates. Now, their target uh, inflation rate is 2%. Why they use 2% is another big mystery, but we can leave that for another discussion. Uh, we're now at what, 5 or 6%. Uh, in order to get down to 2 they've got to raise interest rates higher than what they have now. And that's what we're facing. And that's what the Fed is facing, basically. It's really a big dilemma for them. But look, they created this mess because they're the ones that printed so much money uh, during the uh, problems with the COVID. Can we uh, say that the contagion fears are contained for now? Uh, for now, yes. Uh, the, the, the central bank uh, in America, the Fed has been made the right decision and there seems to be stability, but there's still a lot of people out there who uh, are afraid and are afraid to make a decision at this stage of the game. I think we need another few months before things can settle down. I think the whole thing is very odd, actually. I think for the Fed to be raising interest rates at all here when they are doing, and so is the government, as much as they can to provide liquidity to the system, either through hopefully extending the insurance on bank deposits or um, these uh, these reenaction or these, I should say, these acceleration of these swap arrangements. You know, it's trying to really provide liquidity in, a, in an environment where market conditions have tightened quite dramatically as a result of the events since Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank went, went bust, basically. And then suddenly come back and raise interest rates, I think is is kind of odd, really. Um, and, and my view here is that um, it would have been much better had the Fed held rates steady today and said, look, we're still keeping an eye on inflation. And on the assumption the financial, the concerns in the banking system settle down uh, fairly quickly, if we need to, we'll go back to raising interest rates again. If you look at the inflation data that's coming out, uh, there's good reason. You know, I mean, we're seeing the headline inflation coming down, but actually, it's if anything, the sort of longer term drivers of inflation are actually broadening out and becoming more entrenched. So, uh, I understand where they're coming from, um, and and you know, they're they're clearly sort of between you know weaker growth outlook, which I'm sure we'll get into this high inflation, and then obviously the financial fragility that's been shown of late. Um, so it's really been a very difficult uh, time. I, I guess a dovish 25 was better than a hawkish zero. Um, so, you know, from a market perspective, that was probably the um, the least bad option for them to to pursue, because if they said nothing, then I think markets may have been even worse and worrying, worrying about what the Fed was seeing that they're not. So uh, I think, you know, in the short term, that's probably the optimal point. But uh, yeah, we, we think the economy is ultimately going to be too weak uh, to take this extra burden on, on the chin. So I think it's going to be a bit challenging.